Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Hey, this is Jamie with Black Girl Nerds, and we are here in Los Angeles to talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This is a sequel that is highly anticipated. I know all of you fans have been waiting with bated breath, so we are here to interview the cast. So stick around to listen to those interviews. We cannot wait to fill you in on all the deets. Although Billy has grown older in this sequel, he still kind of kneels into the silliness. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So is that something that's intentional, or does he still have some growing up to do? Well, well a little bit of both, I think. You know, <clears throat> he obviously has growing up to do. He's only 17 in this movie. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, I'm a 42-year-old man, and I'm still plenty silly. So I don't know <laughs> that you ever fully grow out of that, or should ever fully grow out of that. Um, <laughs> But also, I think, you know, listen, I mean, you know, part of what makes the DNA of Shazam as a franchise, I think, interesting and unique is the levity, is the comedy, is the, uh, our ability to be a little more irreverent um, about certain things. Like, other franchises have to take things very seriously. And, you know, similar to Deadpool, though, different than that, or like, you know, there are R-rated kind of situation, we're a PG-13 situation, but we both get to be on the outside looking in. We both get to comment on the universes that we're a part of. And um, to the extent that we get to do that, kind of break that wall and also just have more fun with it because it's a family dynamic, um, you know, it's in the DNA, it's in the script. And I like to find those moments even in just improv and being like, well, what's going to be fun right now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Has Billy's abandonment issues informed his actions as a part of this story and a part of his journey? Because um, he's still kind of carrying that with him. Oh, certainly, yeah. I mean, look, he, you know, it took him 14 years to find a family that embraced him and that he embraced. Mm -hmm. And now three years later, he feel, or three and a half-ish years later, he's, he, he feels like he's at risk of losing that family. Yeah. And that's got to play huge on a lot of unhealed trauma. You know what I mean? Like, we're all walking around with this unhealed trauma. He's got, still got plenty of it. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, he's trying to figure out, oh, how do I keep the, the team together and working together? And, you know, so he's got a lot, of, he's got a lot on his shoulders as a 17-year-old kid. Yeah. And then he's got three goddesses coming down <laughs> trying to kill him. I mean, it's insane. <laughs> He's got a lot going on lot in the sequel. On. And Billy has a bit of a relationship going on with another very well-known character in the DC universe. Um, and as he's getting older and as we're going to see more of the romantic side of Billy, will this have more of a serious approach to his character, do you think? I don't know. Well, listen, I, what I tried to do in this movie was just age him up appropriately right so so i try to play my best 14 year old then i in this one try to play my best 17 year old and so whatever age he is in the next movie i'm going to try and be as honest to what that age is and and where he would be in his maturation process mm -hmm. um but you know he's always going to be younger than i mean certainly younger than <laughs> than wonder woman um so uh yeah i don't know i i think that it's just a matter of staying authentic to wherever he's at in any moment mm -hmm. And then he takes things seriously as he can, given his age and, and, and maturity. They say that, you know, they're the ties that bind us as family. What are the ties that binds this family together? Well, I mean, clearly one of the biggest is that they're all, they all understand what it means to lose your biological family and find a chosen one. And not just all the kids, the parents, you know, uh, Rosa and um, Victor are they themselves uh, uh, foster children who then felt it a, a called to create a home for people who, who were just like them when they were growing up. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, and I, I, I think that's really the, the biggest tie that binds all of these souls. And they all have a good heart. You know, I think that's why. Billy was chosen to begin with to be the champion, and he was able to share that power with the rest of his siblings because they all really want to do good in the world. They all really want to, you know, be their best selves. And so there's a lot that, that ties them together, I think. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for talking to Black Girl Nerds. I really appreciate Absolutely, your time. Absolutely, yeah. Lovely to talk to you. Take care. Teen superheroes, I love you guys. I'm going to start with you, Megan. What has Darla learned? Because I feel like the first film was about lessons. Mm -hmm. So what has she learned in Fury of the Gods 
that may have caused the challenges that she's dealt with and that she's now learned in this film. Yeah, I think in the first one, you know, she was so young, she was only 10, and the big, the biggest thing about her is that she's just such a lover and she just wants family to stick together and she wants her brothers and her sister and all those things. And I think in this one, now she's being more, um, intentional about you know being 12 and it's like okay this is what I got to do this is what I can lend to the equation this is what I can help with you know and, I, and you find out how actually very smart she is even though it comes out in like this little pure package of just like sprinkle dust and stuff but um, I think she's just learning her place and like what she can add to the equation to help her siblings and for them all to be successful as a unit. Absolutely. Yeah. Adam, for you, out of all of the superheroes, with the exception of Billy, I feel like we understand Freddie's backstory the most. So what do you think it is that fuels his agenda? Do you think him being a victim of bullying is something that kind of fuels his agenda? Or what would you think that that is? Um, yeah, I think, I think his agenda, I mean, he, well, I think, I mean, I think some of it is a natural born affinity for comics and superheroes to begin with, you know, he loves the genre. Um, and so, so getting to be one is a dream come true, I think, but deeper down, I think, you know, he has a disability and I think that probably factors in. I think, um, um, you know, I think the freedom to fly for any of us would be pretty empowering and pretty, um, um, uh, extraordinary but I just think for him maybe even more so maybe he's even more hungry for that um, um, freedom yeah yeah mm -hmm. Megan is Darla kind of playing around with us I feel like she's letting on more than she is uh, I guess revealing for the audience because it feels like she's far more advanced in mm -hmm. her intelligence. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of putting off sort of this innocent, yeah. naive act. Would you say that she's kind of letting off more as far as her intellect goes? I think she's both. You know, I think, I think that, uh, I think a lot of us are two things at once that seem like they don't necessarily go together, but for some reason they do. And I think that she does have um, a lot of intellect, and I think she's very smart, but I think she also is very sweet and you know is like the person if like the villain's falling off the side of the mountain you know she'll be the one who like grabs his hand and is just like no not you like I, let me help you maybe you'll be a better person after this you know and so I think that um, she really both of those things come into play at the same time but because of how she presents I think a lot of people assume that maybe you know oh well that's kind of it like she's just a sweet thing and it's like no she's actually smart she's got some good ideas you know if it comes down to it she's gonna kick the guy's butt you know mm -hmm. but she doesn't really want to but she will so right, right but when it comes to empathy how much of a role does that play in being mm -hmm. a superhero and then being out of costume I don't know what so can you expand on that what do you mean like with empathy do you feel like it does it help drive and inform the character more like when you empathize with whether it is, you know, being um, someone like, for example, with Freddie, like he's a victim, yeah. and does that kind of help him be better at fighting? And you know, as he is as the adult superhero, having more empathy for others as a, as a, or, or. Well, I think that probably at the very, at the very least, having mortal alter egos mm -hmm. has got to help you maintain some perspective when you're a super powered hero and you're helping, you know, I mean, obviously like being able to relate to the struggles of the everyday struggles of humans and the life and death struggle, you know, the mortality issue of, of it too. Um, yeah, probably harder if you're just a full blown God. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds and I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, likewise. Thank you. Jamie Bradnax, Black Girl Nerds. Love Black Girl Nerds, by the way. I have so much fun with you guys every time. We love you too. Thank I, you. I had, what was last time you guys at, uh, was it at uh, Comic Con? Comic Con, yeah. The clip we took of you went viral. I way. remember that. <laughs> Wait, what was, that you Wait, what was it? <laughs> I will not, oh my gosh, you I remember, remember that. that. I love you guys. You're my favorites. I'm not even kidding. Oh gosh, you guys are great. Well, I'm going to start with you, Asher. You know, what are some okay. of the greatest lessons that Billy has learned from the first film? that he uses to his advantage in Fury of the Gods? Ooh. Well, I think there was a lot of spiraling. Um, 
in all of it, but uh, <laughs> what does that like, mean? Just, let me explain. I'm gonna get into it. <laughs> okay. okay, fruit loop guy. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like he learned the importance of family, um, and and love and, and loyalty and and then that's one of the things that he used and he uses now in his in his everyday life in the second film. Um, he uh, he's he's takes on the forces of evil with his family, um, and I feel like family is the, the biggest thing um, he could have. So I, I feel like that's one of the things he learned and uses in his everyday life now. It's the importance of family. It's true. Right? Yeah. yeah. Couldn't agree more myself. Aww. Aww. Family's very, you family know, we have this very, you know. <laughs> we're tight. We're like family. You know, I see. Friendship. I see. Brotherly I take my love. eyes off you. <laughs> yeah, like Fruit Loop. Jack, so. um, Freddy is not only juggling being a superhero, but he's also dealing with teen experiences like bullying yeah. and having a school crush. And how does that experience as a team inform his work and responsibilities as a superhero? Oh, good question. Well, I, for me, at least, being an actor and being able to play Freddy, I always have so much fun playing Freddy. And then now that we're we're we're, we're delving into his, his the intricacies of his emotionality and his internality and what what motivates him, and you know, that's, I just love to break that stuff down rather than just you know sitting at home playing Pop Tropica and eating Fruit Tubes, you know, or Fruit Loops, <laughs> Fruit Tubes. <laughs> Fruit tubes are good too. Uh, <laughs> hey, trademark it. Make it happen. Fruit tubes. What's in my goose? Oh, that's so good. Um, you know, and uh, so I love that I, I, I get to play this character with more depth than I did in the first one. Because that's what my dream was after I watched the first one. I was like, I want to come back. I want to do Freddy again, but I want to I wanna add more spice. You know, right. so that's what I'm doing. Spicy. You love spicy. that. Love a spicy love Freddy it. moment. And fruit loops. <laughs> and fruit loops. Fruit tubes. Fruit tubes, yes. Gotta make that happen. Fruit tubes. <laughs> I <laughs> love <laughs> those. Patent pending. Fruit tubes sound awesome. Fruit tubes sound like I wanna. Mm, mm -hmm. Fruit tubes. Sound, actually, they did make fruit tubes. Remember fruit loop straws? Oh, I, I do remember those. <laughs> those were so good. Gosh, so this and video fruit, is now straws. sponsored by Fruit Tubes. We're gonna make it happen. It's sponsored by Fruit Tubes. We like sweets. <laughs> Asher, back to you. How is Billy maturing and gaining his wisdom throughout his life? Is it through his experiences as a teen or his experiences as a superhero? I don't know. I think both. I think he's learning uh, different things while being a superhero and while being a kid, while being a teenager and, 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 and figuring out himself and you know self-discovery and, and things that he's learning being around his family. Uh, so I think it goes. I honestly think it. I think it goes both ways. I think he's. I think he's learning everything. It's always new information that he's that he's soaking up in, in both of his lives, yeah. since he's living the double life. The double life. Sweet yeah. life on deck with Asher Angel. Jack Reed. Dennis. <laughs> Jack Reed. Dylan Grazer. Jack Reed. Dennis Grazer. Yeah. 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 Anyway, yeah. That's what I think. Right. So they say like the the ties are what bind family. What are the ties that bind this family together, Jack? If there was elasticity in fruit tubes, then they would there would be the the bondage bond. Um, <laughs> that what binds us together. Well, we're all superheroes. That helps. We mm. all have this little hidden secret that we all get to bond. I mean, that that's that connects us. But also, I think more importantly than that is we all have come from hardship, or we've all endured things that not any most normal kids did. I mean, in the movie. Um, you know, being a foster kid, there's there's a lot. I mean, untold that goes into that. And I think that most also, I think is what's important is that we don't really need to know everybody's backstory. Asher, of course, because we start with him and we start with Billy's story and um, we see his story specifically. But I can, we can imagine that for Eugene, it must have been difficult, or for Faith. I mean, for Darla, um, you know. And so I think knowing that there's all this this, this unspoken connection between them all. Um, and they've all been through their stuffs and gained the resilience that they have. The triumph at the end of it all makes it much more important and much more uh, heavy hitting, let's say. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, what's been the most remarkable part of this experience working on the second film for you? Remarkable? Yeah. Asher's mind, his body, <laughs> he's out of mind, he's out of, what is it? Um, Anyway, you're just great. Uh, oh, you're hey, great. how does the expert mobilize the steadfast test? It's my brother. Oh. It's my right here. I think just being around <laughs> the cast for me, uh, especially like, I, I, I guess I didn't spend that much quality time with Helen Mirren and, and Lucy Liu and I Rachel did. Zegler on set. He did, for oh. the most part. But during our press tour, I did. Um, but I think the important thing for me is just learning from others and uh, I'm a big consumer, uh, and it's just I think as actors, you know, I, I look up to 
every single one of them. Uh, and, and, and I love watching their performances and just gaining knowledge from them and picking their brains. So I think it's, it's just a learning experience for me uh, during, this, during this journey. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. Thank oh you. God. Yes, I appreciate you. it. You guys and what was your name again? Jamie. Jamie. Nice to meet you. Good to see you. Well, I want to start with you, Rachel. Anne is pretty complex in battling between this allegiance with her sisters and then empathy towards Freddie. Mm -hmm. So what is it that she sees in Freddie that you think she sees in herself? Oh goodness, I love that question. I think um, there's a there's a heart of gold that's there. And also um, an air of confidence that she kind of naturally has as a goddess and knowing that she could easily, um, and she says it in the film, she says, you know, I, I, could have, I could have beaten up those bullies for you, but you stepped in mm -hmm. as just, you know, yourself as a human, the most powerful thing about you is you. And I think um, she I sees, <laughs> <laughs> write that down. I got the chills. <laughs> I think she sees such a good heart in him and the, her entire life she's been told that humans are bad, that they're evil, that they're not who you think they are. And she sees somebody so genuine, whether she's looking at, you know, Freddy as Jack Dylan Grazer or Super Freddy as Adam Brody. And I think she really um, sees that heart of gold in herself and the belief that there is good in others which I think Freddie also has. Yeah, indeed. Lucy, when playing a character that lacks any moral fiber. <laughs> <laughs> Period. <laughs> She's I'm just out of here. It like I see it. Yeah. Rachel's going to answer for me. Yeah. <laughs> Evil. I refuse. I will refute that question. Yeah. <laughs> Do, do you look for anything in them, though, that you can empathize with in order to connect with that character? 100%. I could never play a character that I did not understand and have a history for. And I think for her and for her sisters, they're, they are the saviors in their story. They're here to save their world, their god realm. You know, something was taken from them and their world is dying. So, of course, what would you do in that situation, you know? you could have the courage to step in and do something about it. And that's what her choice is. Yeah. So I don't think that there's, you know, just, it, it's chaos for chaos sake. It's chaos because that's unfortunately what's happening in order to get what you need to get. And you know, at one point, Hesper also sides with her and says, no, I agree with her, you know? Right. And you know, she feels betrayed by Anthea because she's sort of, empathizing with humans and that's not what the the mission was about mm. right. you know we were here as three sisters to get what we needed to get and she kind of got confused mm -hmm. sorry sorry <laughs> sorry sorry not sorry no oh, not sorry <laughs> <laughs> rachel back over to you does empathy play a factor in making a super or making a character a better superhero is that the true su superpower I think so. I think we can apply it to all things in life, is that empathy is a superpower. I think a lot of people lack it nowadays, and mm. that's why the world isn't necessarily well so super all the time. But, mm. uh, you know, the and, and as actors, the ability to empathize with your character is, is a really important thing when you take on a job. So when you're working on a movie like this, that's such a you know behemoth of, of a feat where you're creating a world and, and making something out of nothing, really. Um, it's a very important. I think empathy is important for for superheroes and then you know super villains as they're calling us on the streets nowadays. You and me in this I guess movie. You just have to have something <laughs> there to you know to play off of, which you know Absolutely. is understandable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And and I think um, I, I think that even Zach's character as Shazam has empathy for Hespera in, in this movie, and and that's the reason that he really comes to her and says, I I know that there's empathy in you because there's empathy in me. And, and I know that you can help me out and we can help each other. And that's exactly what they do. So, pretty cool. Yeah. Lucy, the dragon that you were working with in this movie looked so real. Was mm -hmm. that, I mean, was part of that practical effects or was that all CGI? It, it was all really CGI, good. but I was on something that was moving and it was, a, it was a, this huge metal post that kind of had all these other pistons and moved. And so that's what I was actually riding. Mm -hmm. And Crazy. so it was this mechanism that they had created. Um, and it was very new. So I was definitely one of the guinea pigs for it. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they, they put all the safety mechanisms and you could change the speed. But what they liked about it was that it was 
connected digitally to what they actually wanted to do visually. Mm -hmm. So they could repeat the movement of what they wanted to do for those um, frames. Yeah. So, so it was cool. very specific and very detailed, like down to the number. So cool. Yeah, Khaleesi better come running because yeah, <laughs> that dragon was something else. Out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Black Girl Nerds. I really love this film and appreciated your time. Thank you oh, so much. Thank, thank you. We had questions. awesome questions, oh, except for that one question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ross, I'm going to start with you. Okay. This movie is about family. Yeah. But it's also about the growing pains of family mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, how that family dynamic shifts. How do we see that in Fury of the Gods? Um, so in the first movie, the powers are a secret to the whole family and also obviously the kids don't have the powers until the end. So this movie, it's been some time after the first one, so all of these characters have really grown with each other having powers. So we are a superhero family. This is like a, a year after like we have our little inside jokes. We have our like our combined power thing. So it's like you get to see it's a it's um what's the word I'm looking for like extrapolated. Yeah. Great yeah. word. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> that is the word you're looking big for. Word. Well done. I did my SAT prep. All right, that's my right there. Uh, yeah, so you just see a little bit further down the road. See how we all interact yeah. together. We're also getting press. Like we we're, we're known as a superhero unit in Philly in this film, mm -hmm. and so we, <laughs> the world is watching us try to figure yeah. all this stuff out. Like they're trying to figure out a nickname for us, and we're getting press coverage for all the mm -hmm. things that we screw up. So it's. Uh, it's not only are we children saddled with trying to become superheroes, but we're also getting saddled with like fame, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, in a way, like we're getting bad dealing fame. with PR <laughs> and interviews like this. You know, Notoriety. It's, it's, it's fun. There's a lot of lot of fun things to play with. Well, I'll I'll go to you, DJ. You, you think. Um, you know, I think about family and, and the ties that kind of bind family. Yeah. So, what are the ties that bind this family together in Fury of the Gods? Well, I think. You know, they, they, they're kids that grew up in a foster home, uh, first and foremost. You know, it's, it's very fun and, and fantastical and distracting when you get into the god realms and, and the superhero aspect. But at the end of the day, these are, these are all kids looking for a home, looking for a family. And like we all are, you know. Um, so I think that, that, you know, that the core binds them. These are, these are kids that are trying to, they're in a position where they're forced to uh, create a family, you know, have a found family, mm -hmm. and um, and Victor and Rosa are the dream parents. Absolutely, they're so absolutely. incredibly loving and wonderful and supportive. So they, yeah, they have a remarkable situation of being in a family with each other, loving each other, and we yeah. get to see Billy actually because at the end of the first one, Billy's deciding he'll stay. He'll stay with his family. He's not going to run away anymore. So it's sweet because we get to see what it's like for him to be a part of this. <laughs> wild family. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easy to take your family for granted when you yeah. come from a, you know, you come, if you grow up and your family's together, it's easy to take it for granted. Yeah. But these are kids that have to, you know, uh, deal with those issues really early in their life and, uh, you know, maybe appreciate it. Maybe not so much in this movie. We're kind of starting to take it for granted <laughs> yeah, a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we're all doing our own thing. We're yeah. growing up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Grace, you've jumped into this role and um, into the second one. But what have you enjoyed most about playing Mary in Fury of the Gods? I'm such a big fan of Mary's heart because she's such she's the therapist. She's gonna sit you down and have the heart to heart. So I I, I always love um, getting to have those moments where she's kind of speaking to the heart of an issue, um, and getting to have a moment with Zach in this one was really sweet and and loved shooting that scene. Um, Helen was on set the day prior and she was like, you have a big scene coming up. And I was like. No pressure, Jesus, hell no. <laughs> yeah. hey. I was like, nope. yes I do. Mm -hmm. I, was like, the, I watched you shoot mm -hmm. that though. You, you, that was you fun, that was fantastic. a sweet day. But yeah, I mean obviously being in the suit's pretty rad. <laughs> Absolutely, and you guys did an incredible job. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to black girl nerds and I can't wait for everybody to see it. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds. Better shake your booties for black girl nerds.